Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is your boy, No Mockery from Madden Physics, and we're going to go over the run and shoot playbook. All right. Right now, I'm showing a defense so you can see how I like the lab. All of my cornerbacks are on steroids, as you see. Very high rating. Safety is the same thing. And we also have the linebackers. My team is average. Just to let you know, receivers are the exact same. Nothing's really changed. And this is pre-update, as you see, Gilmore is still on the Patriots. Now, I want to start the guide off with a few play action plays, all right? I want to start off with the PA deep in out of pistol spread. And this is basically my shot play or one of my shot plays, all right? Now, I want to have the dig route towards the boundary, all right? The only adjustment I would like to make is put the slot receiver next to the dig route on the streak, all right? Streak or fade, doesn't really matter. And what you're going to see against cover two, cover three, cover four match, and if you got the right personnel, man coverage, you're going to see that post get open across the field. Now, me personally, I prefer to keep the play action, you know? And the way you want to throw this is, in this case, since the hash marks on the left side that we are on, I want to throw it at a seven o'clock angle. If the play was flipped and you was on the right hash mark, you would want to throw it at a five o'clock angle. You want to throw it once the receiver passes the hash mark, all right? Or right on the hash mark. You're going to see right there. Easy pitch and catch. That's cover two. Now, the dig route and the running back route are usually routes to kind of keep the the user distracted. If you like, you could put the outside receiver towards the field, which is not working. Let me reset this. Cover three. Go back to PA deep in. Now, I recommend running this play against cover three if your opponent is using custom zone drops or he's playing over the top. Reason being is you want the apex defenders to not chuck the receivers that's in the slot, all right? Now, I'm gonna show the receivers getting chucked in the slot to show you you can still get it off, but the pass is gonna be closer than usual, all right? You see, the fact that the receiver got chucked, he couldn't clear out the area, all right? Now, I'm gonna show cover three with the receivers getting, uh, getting a free release. And you see what I mean? Now you can even throw, it's not showing what kind of throw I'm throwing for some reason. I'm throwing a low ball to kind of get it in a better angle. Cover four quarters. Same thing. You can actually just throw it as soon as he passes the hash mark because all of the other defenders are matching their, their guy. And as you see, like, you know, the faster the receiver, the better the receiver, you know, the better the outcome. All the safeties and cornerbacks are, you know, on steroids, as I spoke of earlier. So that's why you saw a closer defender. Same thing goes here. This is Palms. You know, try to get big on them. But that's how you run that right there. All right. Now, I want to show R a run and shoot post drag. And it's a similar concept, just attacking the field side. The two adjustments I will make if I run this is I will streak the slot receiver towards the field. Put the outside receiver on the comeback. It's not showing it, but he's on a comeback. And ideally, I want to double team the field side D tackle if they are in a four down lineman because I want the running back to hopefully chop block the D in. All right. And basically, I want to roll out and read the drag or the post against cover two. 
You'll see I have to drag there, and if I wait, I have to post. Now, that mid read played it amazingly because, you know, again, he's all swooped up in the 90s and everything. But we're going to run it again. Okay. See if I can fit it this time. Oh, that's what's happening. He's getting bumped. But normally that doesn't happen. And if he doesn't bump him like that, he's going to get free right there on the sideline. That's cover two. Cover three. Same that you have to come back. I'm sorry, you got the, the drag, and then you have to post right there. All right. Quarters. Again, we streaking the slot receiver towards the field. Doing a comeback to the outside receiver number one. And double teaming the D, the D tackle towards the field. So the running back can hopefully chop block the D in like that. And it's the same thing. Now I threw that at a five o'clock angle, but you wanna you wanna see what kind of angle you could throw. Sometimes you wanna throw it across the field, you wanna throw it up the field, depends on the personnel that's matching him. Palms. Okay. Same thing. Drag and you have the post. Now, I want to show two more play actions. The next one is out of single back. It is the PA uh, flanker stretch. Now, with this year's Madden, especially due to the update that just took place, when the running back is directly behind the quarterback and you have trips to the field with a solo receiver towards the boundary, the cover two defender on top of the solo receiver matches him. Now, let me let me let me correct myself. He doesn't always matches him, but what's important is that he doesn't jam him. And because he doesn't jam him against cover two, you have this right here. All right. Now. The only thing that you got to be worried about is if your opponent is playing a soft squat and he has a good corner over there like this because he's going to match him and he could potentially shut it down. But as you saw right there, you had this route coming across. All right. Now, the way it works is that when you're in a one by three and the running back is directly behind the quarterback, you're going to get this vert hook right here matching the first crosser or first route that's coming um, to the flats towards the boundary. That even includes the running back. So if I do something like this, you're going to see him match the running back. You see? Now you can kind of expose that against cover two, but we're not, you don't really run against cover two that much. Now, Cover two got updated to where it works really well, actually. And this is, this is the reason why I'm redoing the, uh, the guide. But, you know, if your opponent stays in cover two, you're going to find out there's really many ways to expose it. All right. And that's cover two. Whenever it's cover three, which I don't really come out with this specific play against cover three. But if it is cover three, I either put my outside receiver on a comeback route or I would drag him. And it's not showing both. Let me just try to... Try to do something. There we go. I had to block the running back to kind of fix the issue. But this is basically a levels concept you want to be patient about. Now, when you run this play, you want to read the drag, the backside drag, okay? In the event that your opponent is playing hard flats, you can hit the, the, the crossing route, all right? So you want to throw it right there. And basically read the user. If he bites down on that drag, you throw the crosser. All right. I usually throw the crosser as a touch pass. All right. That's cover three. We're going to run it again real quick. Guess cover three. You can wait for the crossing route if you can. I mean, if it opens up right there like it did. That's a shallow cross. 
against cover four. If you have the right receiver that has an ability or he's just way better than a corner. You can throw this post against quarters. Now that really happens with the with the actual receivers that I have compared to these corners. I'm gonna run it again against quarters. You see, he usually closer like that. But I mean, if you have the right receiver there, it doesn't really matter what he do. Palms, you don't really have much forgiveness like you do in quarters which means that the corner is going to play tougher no matter what the corner is in, in terms of stats. But if you have like a route tech or anything like that, you can take a shot. And if my receiver was just as fast as the corner, I could have lobbed it like that. All right. Now that's PA flanker stretch. The last one is really meant to torch cover two and match coverage. And you can find that, this one out of trips left open it is called pa verticals all right again i have the trips towards the field the only adjustment i make with this play is i put the boundary receiver on a smoke screen all right so he stays down you have to cross at the first read but if it's stock cover two and they're they not using custom zone drops you, what you're going to see is you can be patient enough to throw that post on top of the deep half. Like that. No, oh, that was a bad pass. I was it? <sighs> kind of get the drift. It's not really showing what kind of pass I'm throwing. That was a touch pass, high ball. But the faster receiver, the easier to pass. So you just, you know, I can throw it right there. All right. That's a 90 speed receiver and i have mccordy at 94 speed all right now that's cover two you got a one two punch now if they do a deep blue it's going to cover it's going to cover that post i believe let me see but you're still going to have the crosser so your opponent has to do a custom zone drop That's crazy. Like, that was a deep blue, but he bit the run. <laughs> and you could tell it was a deep blue because whenever it's stock cover two with no custom zone drops, most cases this guy matches the vertical, as he did right there. Now, cover three is not so great. So I'm not going to really show it. Well, no, well, I'll show it. Why not? If you get an aggressive, if you get an aggressive opponent that plays the deep, the deep middle, you know, and he bites the run. You could bomb this. You could easily bomb this post. Okay. But I'm going to show you. It's not really great. You want to check down with the running back if it is cover three. Like that. Okay. Uh, and, and you'd be surprised. I run into a lot of people who try to play underneath with the scheme I have on this playbook. And they are user to safety. So believe it or not, you may get chances where you can kind of just bomb that that post against cover three. All right, I be running into opponents that run quarters cover three with the spy, and they play underneath and they play the safety, and uh, you can bomb them with this right here. All right, now quarters and palms is the exact same read. The post is all about personnel, but you're gonna get the crosser route right by itself every time if the user doesn't follow. Boom! As soon as he crosses over, right there. That was quarters. Let's go to palms. Same event. Boom. Real simple. But like I said, that post is all about personnel. If you got a good matchup, you can take the shot. All right. Now, the best way to run this concept is having the twins towards the boundary and the stack towards the field. All right. Three adjustments I make. First one is the slot receiver, which is Cooper towards the boundary. I put him on a hitch. Second, uh, uh, second adjustment streak, the inside stack receiver. Last adjustment is put the running back on the wheel route. Now 
I would never come out in this play against cover two, but my job is to show you how each main coverage look against all the setups in the playbook guide. All right. So just keep that in mind. Against cover two, you want to just throw it quickly to the wheel route. That's that's the worst case scenario. Depending on what your opponent does, say if he mans up that apex defender over lamb, you can, you know, get more yards. But that's that's cover two. Like I said, I don't run it against cover two. Moving on to cover three. Again, we streak. Inside stack, hitch, the slot receiver towards the boundary, and we'll route the running back. Now, the reads are the running back, the slant, or the hitch, depending on what the hook do. All right? Now, we're going to run it. Wait for that flat route to clear that curl flat, and that's your first read. Now, before I show the other progressions, let me just show you cover two. Say, I just forgot. Say they are in cover two. What you could actually do is kind of create a pseudo, not create, but like it's basically a pseudo smash concept where you see the flat in the wheel route is putting the curl flat def or the cloud flat def uh, defender in conflict. Okay, when this bug stop working, there we go. So if you wait, you see the wheel route is putting the flat defender in a conflict. But I mean, it's not much yards, but you see it's a safe pass. Now back to cover three. Streak, wheel, hitch. Again, a wheel route, if you wait, you have that. Now normally, if the wheel route isn't open, that slant is because they are using resources to cover the wheel route. And if it's not alignment, it's most likely a hook curl. All right. And in the event that your opponent uses alignment to man up the running back, that just means you can wait for a route bounce or scramble because you're going to have plenty of time in the pocket when there's three or less rushing. All right. Again, cover three. We're going to read the boundary. So we have triangle or square. See square is carried. Most cases, most cases, the, the hook curl bites on the, the hitch route. All right. Now, I said this is the best way to run it. It's towards the field. But you're going to see that example more often when you have the, when you have to stack towards the boundary where the hitch holds the hook curl and it leaves you it's gonna be a long long day it's real buggy i can't make no adjustments okay let's run out again sorry about that streak hitch wheel against cover three you're gonna read the twin side towards the field her curl bites slant but again the wheel route is the first read. Let's do an instant replay. Right there, the little crease. He has to come down to guard this. In the event he does, that's when you have to slant. All right. But I will mainly only run it with the twins towards the field if I know it's cover three. All right. And I'm going to show you why. Cover four, palms and quarters. You have a chance for a one play touchdown bomb. It's the same setup. You're looking for Lamb. Against quarters, he stays inside. You can bomb it outside to Lamb. Against palms, the person I'm speaking about is Phillips. Against palms, he's going to shade outside, and you want to high ball inside against palms. Now, with this guide, all the examples I'm going to show you is with slower receivers. I play with the Cowboys and Regs ex exclusively. So 
the way I'm throwing the ball complements slow receivers. I can imagine that with faster receivers or receivers that's more in the line at the same speed as the corner, you may not have to do a high ball. But because I have slow receivers, the high ball works for me. All right. But first, we're going to show quarters. You're going to see. Throw an outside touch pass. Now, in the, in, the, in the case of quarters, you don't have to throw a high ball because he just gets beat. All right. Now, palms. You're going to see he's going to actually cut outside. And if the user is not in that in that void, you can throw it quick right there. You don't have to high ball. All right. But say he is carrying that seam to the safety with the three rack hook or whoever he is, which is most likely the three rack hook. You're going to see against palms. Slow receiver, you want to throw it inside. In this case, nine o'clock, if he wants to, you know, clock it, high ball. You're going to get that most of the time. Now, keep in mind, if you play reg specifically, most strong safeties aren't that fast. Phillips speed is, let's take a look at his speed, just to kind of remind ourselves of the safeties. Ninety three speed, ninety four speed. So kind of keep those numbers in your mind as we lab and show this guide. All right. It's very important. You, you notice that the speed dif differential is very, very large when it comes to these receivers and in, in, in DBs. All right. Even a linebacker's hell. Next play we're going over is the PAZ under out of gun spread. There's two setups. I like to run with it. Right now, I'm going to show you the first setup that the running back is towards the boundary. All right. The adjustments goes as follows. The number one on the bound in the boundary, put them on an out route. The running back on a wheel route. And you want to motion the boundary receiver that you just audible into an out route towards the field, turning that into an in route. All right. The reads are the exact same against cover two and cover three. And I'm going to show you how you can attack cover four match next. All right. Now, towards the boundary, the flat defender is going to play that corner post as if it's a corner long enough to where you can throw that wheel route. In the event that the wheel route, route isn't open, you want to throw it to that first in route. If the in route is covered, then nine times out of ten, that corner post will be open in a nice window, which I'm going to show. All right. Your last read is that backside in route trailing the first in route that you motioned over. Amari Cooper's deep dog route is to pull any zone defender in the area back far enough to where you have that that read underneath. OK, you really want to go to him unless it's man coverage or they playing like crazy underneath. All right. Now the first read is the running back. Drop the ball, but you kind of get the drift. I don't think I have to show that too much because throwing it to the wheel route early is a popular thing. But we're going to show the adjustments again. We go to go to the field side. Now against cover two, most cases you can throw that first in route real early right there for quick yards, turn up field. But I usually wait for the backside in route because that's a consistent read against cover two and cover three. Cover three, that first in route can be jeopardized by a hook curl or a spy. All right. But you're going to see that pull route by Cooper pulls them back, leaving that little window right there, window right there to throw it to. All right. Now, in the event they play underneath or they have their custom zone drops uh, five yards or less. What you're going to see is this corner post. Open a nice, nice little window right there. All right. Now, I really throw to the corner post. Unless the user 
is playing a hook defender on this side of the, of the ball or, or of the field, all right? Because most cases, he's going to bite down on either the wheel route or that first in route, all right? And since this is a double move that's being done by, by C.D. Lamb, he's not going to see him come back inside in time to cover that window, all right? Now, that's cover two. Cover three is the exact same reads, all right? Have the running back, first in route right there. And if your opponent's not playing their hook, hook curls to 10 yards or 15 yards, and they have them on the fault, you should theoretically be able to throw it to this corner post consistently. You can even smart route it to give it two more yards, but let's keep it the same just for this example. Right there. Aggressive catch, so you won't get no catching traffic animation. Cover three again. This time I'm gonna show the backside in route. You see right there, that hook curl gets pulled all the way towards the dog route. Now let's play over top and see how the zones react. All right, first in route, second in route, both open and you still have the pogo route open or the copo route open. All right, now Due to the zone drops you can do in Madden, opponents don't really play over top or underneath as much, but I was trying to simulate that example to kind of show if they are playing deep zones, how everybody opens up underneath. You say you had, everybody's open. All right, but that was cover two and cover three. Quarters. You kind of want to know his quarters because that's what gives you the, the best outcome. So if your opponent spams quarters or palms or whatnot, I wouldn't necessarily keep that in route on, on Wilson. I would actually streak him. That way I have at least three vertical routes. Phillips has number three towards the field against quarters. All right. In the event that I don't put him vertical, you're going to see he's going to be in the way of the corner post. See? Now, Gunslinger could probably get that there, but I don't play with Gunslinger. I'm a Regs player. I play with the Cowboys. But just to be safe, because you, know, you don't know which cover four your opponent will be in, just keep the adjustment against cover four match the same. All right? So you see? If you're patient, want to wait now. Got sacked there, but... You don't have to wait as long if the corners are not that good. But since the corners are so much better than my receivers, I'm going to show a little more patience to throw that pogo route or copo route against quarters and palms. All right. Again, right there. That was quarters. And here's palms. All right. Okay, I pressed the button froze on me. I pressed X, but the button froze on me. I think it was due to that play action bug that the, that that you just saw how the quarterback shuffled towards the field. It's kind of weird, but anyway. One more time. Palms. Right there. Now I mean, acrobat, whatever, but a better receiver or an evenly matched receiver will get the leverage, all right? Now, the other setup is real simple. I mainly do it against cover three. Well, you could do it against any other cover, any coverage besides, uh, I wouldn't even say that. I would say it works against any coverage. It's just that you won't get the 
best results against certain coverages. But all I'm doing here is having the running back towards the field, and I'm bringing in the boundary receiver who was Gallup this time, and I'm putting him on a smoke screen. All right? Now, it's a real simple read. It's real quick. You can keep the play action if you like, or you can put him on a wheel route. You can do this right here, which I never do, but you can do that. So you have that little wheel flat concept. Leave the play action. Or I'll just block them regular. But you see right here, if it lets me hike it, like that. And you can get more yards. All right. This is a good setup to kind of get a feel of your opponent's defense. It's nice and safe. You have a you have essentially two man beating routes if it is man coverage by the dog route and the corner post. And like I said, if you wanted to, if you wasn't trying to turn up the field with the smoke screen, you could have the running back on the out route. So this is pretty safe. All right. It also puts your opponent in a um, sticky situation if he's playing double Mabel. And he has to choose between the running back route real quick or the corner post. Cover three. Now start cover three. You're going to see that that smoke screen is going to bring down a curl flat. You have that pass right there. That's why I say it's a good play to kind of read your opponent's defense. But let's play over top to kind of the kind of simulate zone drops. Okay, I believe he's on a smoke screen, even though it's not showing it. Yeah, he is. And you see, same read. Now, I motioned him up the field, but he came backwards, so that's kind of weird. But you kind of get the drift. Now, if you like, you can also just do it like this. You know, you read whichever one is open. That's a pretty good way to kind of attack your opponent. Because if he's this guy right here against cover two, and he bites down on the running back route, you have the corner post. Real simple, right? Show cover three. So you can actually hit that one against cover three or the running back and corner post. Quarters. We go show the smoke screen first. See, not that great against quarters and palms. Now, you can wait for that pogo or corner post, but it's not worth it if you ask me. All right. That's the same event against palms as well. But let's see what happens if you do it with the in route and the out route by the running back. Just read whoever has leverage. I could have threw it to both the in route or the out route by the running back right there. And it gets palms. Okay, you can probably, we can wait it out. But you see, palms played that out route by the running back better. All right. But that's PAZ under. All right, we're going to go over weak flood out of gun flanker close. One of my favorite plays of this playbook. Now, Stalk, you could just run it just like this. But what I want to do, I want to have that post as an option as well. Okay, so what I do is I streak the inside stack receiver. And then you notice the running back is towards the field. All right. Now, I'm going to have a high-low read towards the boundary, which if my opponent is playing stock coverage or just not having his zone drops deep enough, I'm going to always have this deep dog route against any coverage. Match coverage and man coverage, you want to throw it at the cut. Zone coverage, you want to wait until there's a clearance like, you know, like right there. 
Now that, that was cover two stock. Okay. Doesn't matter if it's a cloud flat, soft squat, whatever. If it's not custom zone dropped to like 15 yards plus, there's no way your opponent can stop that. I also like the fact that this drag route gets open as well. So you have both reads to go to. All right. Now that's cover two. Now let me show in the in the event that your opponent doesn't jam like he's playing soft squats, he's playing custom zone drops, and he's not jamming that receiver. That's when you can throw the post. And it works against deep blues from the linebacker as well because that streak that you put the inside stack receiver on carries that guy as well. Now, you can block the running back if you don't have that good of a line. The way I like to do it is double teaming the DN on the side that the running back is on. And what that does is forces his check and release to be that DN to where he's going to automatically block him if he's coming in. Okay? And cover two. Just throw in as a clearance, right? Uh, you saw the clear. You saw how open he was. You know how practice mode pass rush is crazy. I have these guys uh, dumbed down and they still coming in crazy. But you see right here, you have the drag. You have that deep dog route opening up but again I'm not really looking for the deep dog route if he's playing off because I know this right here is a good option you see how wide open he is now I like to throw that mostly a low ball to make sure he stays underneath the defenders like this Take control, try to get more leverage so I can do a rat catch, just like that. Now, just for argument's sake, he's playing cover two back. Just want to make sure this dog route gets opened by Cooper. Yeah, so if they play back, he covers it better. All right, which is fine because you see how open that drag is. But if they plan with their cover two like, like so... And it's a soft squat, even. You're going to see he gets wide open. Oh, he got, okay. What to say? But that's cover two. Cover three, the reads are the exact same. It has to be a custom zone drop to stop the flood towards the weak side. So the read is just the drag order the deep dog but what keeps the user honest is this route right here the post route and if you have your best receiver running that route whatever abilities he have or whatnot he's gonna be virtually unstoppable against the ai zone coverage man coverage no matter what all right now palms you go see the exact same thing, but he won't get open. The post won't get open against match coverage, like I said, unless he's your best receiver with the route abilities and all that other stuff, or if it's just a weaker or slower corner, right? But what you're going to see is on the cut, Cooper route opens up. Quarters. Got the drag route, it's not open. You wait for that dog route. And I was trying to see if that post route was going to get open, but again, it's personnel based. All right. It's the replay. You see, he eventually opens up, but again, this is your guy. Now, if your opponent plays, let's say, quarters or palms over top. The running back is an option, and then you have Cooper still as an option. That applies to quarters and palms. 
All right. Now, now, the other adjustment I like to make, which is the second adjustment, if my opponent is specifically in cover three, all right, or, or cover four or match coverage, I want to put the outside receiver towards the field in the flat and the running back on the wheel. All right. And what that's going to do is give me more dimension, you know, where I can attack the weak flood towards the boundary and against cover three or cover four match or just any cover coverage that's not cover two. I can throw this guy up the field. Against match coverage, he doesn't get matched at all and I can get even more yards. So he throw it inside. I could have racked it, but you catch my drift. And it also ha it doesn't have to be the outside receiver. I just like the outside receiver. But if you feel more comfortable with the drag, you can keep it like that. And it's the same thing. But you see the hook curl. He comes. He's he's a little bit closer, but it doesn't really matter, right? Now that's that setup. The third setup is motioning over the deep dog route, turning it into a deep dig route. All right. The second adjustment to that is putting the receiver next to him on a flat. And basically what you go see is against cover three and cover four coverages, If you wait on that deep dig route and you have the protection, right there, you can throw it to him. Easy 20 yards. Now your read in this setup is basically the running back and the dig route. This flat defender gonna be taken away by this guy, so you ain't gotta worry about this guy in a way at all. You gotta read this guy. What is he gonna do? If he bails back, running back if he comes forward receiver real simple this right here can get open if they plan of course you know deep zone drops after you ran the deep dog route a few times on them this post route it's not really useful you can make you know you could put anything on him you could put him on a comeback route or whatever all right but you're going to see against cover four as well quarters And let's put him on the comeback route, right? So now you have a high-low read over there, essentially. You're going to see the same thing. Now, I will say that post route does carry that carry back the cover three deep third, the middle the middle uh, safety. So keeping it the same against cover three will, will be fine, you know. It keeps that safety back from attacking that deep dig route. Palms. Same thing. I like throwing it downward just to be safe. You don't have to. It's just a habit, you know. That's that setup. The last setup is I am motioning over Gallup, the corner. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The post that turns into a corner. And now we have a bunch strong, essentially. All right. And I have a couple adjustments I like to make with this. First one being, I want a smart route, which is not showing. Let me redo the play. I want a smart route, that dagger route, to where I get a drive concept. Like that. Blocking the running back, if you're not really uh, worried about the protection, you can. It's up to you. But basically, you have the drive concept underneath. Run it again. And I believe the cloud flat covers the 
deep dog route by Cooper since there's no route on top of him. So let me see. He kind of, but you see, he kind of like got distracted by that drag route. All right. Against cover three. Show you what I mean. All right. Cover three. Drag. Cooper. Now that you saw that deep third handles that dog route better, but you throw it downward in front of him, you can still get it like he did just there. One more time. Again, you got the, the drag and you have, I threw that too late because I was thinking of something. But again, you have the drag wide open, which again, take it every time. Look at that. That's easy 10 plus yards. The dagger is doing this job by bringing everybody back. You know? And then you have this guy right here opening up. Cover four quarters, um, or this, in this case, palms. You know you motioning to a four by one. So most cases, when that happens, it cancels the match properties. Throw it downward, easy pickings. But you see, you could have, you know, read the drive concept. Right there, I mean, it's real easy. Now, motioning over this corner, how can we use this corner? Have a rollout corner. <laughs> you have a rollout corner in run and shoot. I tried to build some suspense, but you see what I'm getting at. And you can choose who you want to, you know, streak up. I like streaking the slot, the slot guy. It's up to you. Again, when you double team the guy that's on uh, the D tackle that's on the same side as the running back, and it's a four down lineman. You're going to get him to block the DN by default. Now, I believe that was cover two that I've shown, right? Yeah, it was cover two that, I, that I've shown just there. And you see, I could attack both, both parts of the field in that area with this deep dog route. But anyway, we're attacking the, the field side. Easy pickings right there. I mean, you ain't even got to roll out, but you know, if that's something you want to do, you have escape artists, for instance, you can. That was cover three. Palms and quarters is the exact same thing. Again, it doesn't matter who you use. They got to fix this double team stuff. It's not working like it was before the update. But I digress. Easy, easy pickings. And I want to say that's all of Weak Flood. Next, we're going to go over the 60H Y option out of gun spread. Now, you want to have the running back towards the, towards the field. And I have two setups for this play. They basically the same, but I'm going to show you why I make these two setups. Okay. The first setup is putting the running back on the option, putting the boundary receiver on the comeback route, okay? I have a high-low read towards the boundary against cover two and cover three. Against cover four match, you're gonna have the comeback route as an option, okay? Against cover two, you're gonna have the read between the option route from the running back and the option route from the slot receiver towards the field, okay? If it's stock cover two, you can bomb cover two, just like this. He turned in the middle of the field, throw it up the field, 12 o'clock, touchdown, all right? Now, 
that's the simple adjustment if I know my opponent is in stock cover two or some cover two variant. But I could extend that even further by doing two things. Let me just go back to the default. Okay, this is how the play looks by default. Now, the three adjustments I make with the second setup is instead of leaving Cooper on that option, hitch in or out, I'm going to put him on a designated hitch. I'm going to put the running back on the option route. And I'm a smart route the post dig option. What what's that going to do is give me a nice high low read in the middle of the field where the user is never right. OK, against start cover two, you can still bomb start cover two the exact same way as you see, which is a good thing. You're just giving up your levels or your smash read towards the boundary if you do it that way. But you're more concerned about creating good spacing in the middle of the field by doing it this way. Again, running back on an option route, Cooper on a hitch, and I'm smart routing the slot receiver towards the field. Now, where does this come in handy outside of the bomb that I just shown is in the event your opponent puts a deep blue or if he, pl or if he plays cover three, this is where it's gonna come in handy. Because whenever there's a cover three shell, the receiver is gonna always do the dig route. I have to run it back or I could just wait to throw it to the dig route right there. And if that vert hook bails back for the dig route towards the boundary, I can throw it to Cooper. Real simple. Now that was cover two with a deep blue. Cover three, it's the exact same thing. Now if the apex defender, which is Gilmore, if he jams a uh, lamb, that dig route is gonna go even deeper, which makes the levels even better if you have the, the pass protection to wait for it. I'm gonna show you when he gets bumped and I'm gonna show you when he doesn't. See how deep he is when he gets bumped, he's 20 yards deep. Now gets cover three, if he's not bumped, let's just put him on a curl flat. I'm sorry, a hard flat so he doesn't jam lamb. Again, hitch the boundary slot receiver. Put the running back on the option route. Smart route, lamb. I'm assuming he's smart routed, but the, the play art is broken. But you see, that's the little spike and throw it to. Now, if it gets close, you can do a high ball. I will tell you this. If this guy is the user, you don't have to high ball, just wait for him to get across like he just like he just did. If this guy's the user, you can high ball it or just wait for him to to bail and throw it down to the hook. Okay? Cuz you see he's like open right here in a sense automatically. Which is a good thing, right? Now, back to the first setup against cover three. The option that Cooper chooses is an out route. And that automatically lets the comeback route be your first read, especially in the event that he's playing stock cover three or cover three match. He buys down right there. So it's like a give and take. Whichever adjustment you make, you can give yourself a high-low read towards the boundary. It's just your middle read isn't as strong because you only got two routes. But if you give your middle read more power by putting that option route by Cooper on a hitch, you kind of give up the outside read, okay? 
but it's a good way to mix and match what you're doing on offense. Against palms and quarters, of course, you already know another option you could do is put the any receiver on the outside on the comeback route. And the, the play order is broken. There we go. But you see, he's never wrong. The better the receiver, the better the outcome. All right. That was Palms. Quarters. Again, if you if you know for a fact your opponent is in a match coverage, you know, you can make the necessary adjustments. And in this case, what I do against match coverage, I just put two comeback routes and an option route by the running back. Real simple. All right. I don't even have to put the boundary receiver or either outside receiver on a comeback route, I could just put one, and that's the basically the first adjustment, which is like this, right? Real simple. That's match coverage. You saw cover two, and you saw cover three. All right, now we're going over run and shoot, switch, dig. I mainly come out in this play if my opponent plays a lot of cover two all right the way the game is programmed right now it works best against cover two i do have a high low read between the dig route and the running back i can make the running back do a wheel route against cover three and cover four which opens up more options but that same adjustment doesn't work the same against cover two and you don't really need it against cover two it works fine against cover two as is the outside routes that get switched are overcarried by the cloud flat defenders in cover two, which leaves these wheel routes open as soon as they pass the corner. And I threw that outside towards the sideline. All right. If you have something like gunslinger or something, you might, might want to wait a little bit longer. All right. The wide side of the field, same thing. Easy yards. Now, to stop this, your opponent could do soft squats or, of course, custom zone drops. But what that does is leave the middle of the field vulnerable, especially right there in the post. All right. Now, let's run that again. All right. Wait for it, wait for it, boom. All right, now, <laughs> wait for it. Oh, that vert hook is, is messing him up. But you see, it gets open right there, right? Now, if they do a deep blue, and say if they're doing sync, that usually slows down everything. But the dig route and the running back route is where you begin to read. When you notice that, okay, now I'm reading high-low. He's right here open, dump him down. Against cover three or cover four quarters and palms, I don't really come out with this play, but in the event that they are, or they may audible into it, I put the running back on a wheel route, all right? And that basically puts the hook defender towards the field in conflict. He has to choose between the wheel route or the dig route. And most likely, the wheel route will be open the first couple times. But if you run it enough, which I don't advise spamming plays, but say if you either run it enough or your opponent, he, he follows the wheel route, then that's when you have the dig route. I'm going to give you an example right here. Oh, he follows. Okay, got the dig route. Real simple. Palms. Got the dig route as an option. And then, then it comes down to personnel. The dig and the post, it comes down to personnel. If you have the personnel to beat their guy, it's a cover for a match nightmare 
But I don't really have those guys. So I just go accordingly to what my opponent likes to do with their tendencies. You know what I mean? I don't come out in this play just to come out in it. I come out when I know my opponent plays a lot of cover two. But you see, anybody who's running that dig route can get open. But the user can guard that easy. So I can't really depend on this post route because you see it gets covered pretty well. Gun trips levels is the next play we're going to go over, all right? But before we do, I want to ex explain to you that when you choose a play out of the favorites tab, it goes to the default package. You see right here in trips, gun trips, I have tight end slot. What I did is I subbed out the tight end for a receiver with this package that gives me four receivers. All right. But when I choose a play out of the, the favorites tab, you're going to see it's still uh, three receivers and one tight end. All right. That's global with any formation, any playbook or whatnot. It doesn't matter. As long as you choose a play out of the favorites tab, that will happen if you ever experience that that is why okay now back to the play gun trips levels first off i want to have my trips always to the field with this guide you're going to see my trips always to the field all right the good thing about gun trips is that it's a four by one so there are no matching properties what i mean by four by one is there are four receivers to want to uh on one side of the ball okay that cancels out all matching properties in matten okay and the benefit of that is our reads are consistent th through in and throughout the only coverage that may give this play trouble is man coverage. All right. But stalk, you have two good routes you can kind of throw against man coverage. First off is the one that closes your app and gives you a report error. That's the first way. All right. Never mind that. Don't come out in this play if your opponent spams man coverage or whatnot because apparently a game crashes all right but this play is a zone beater it's meant to beat and destroy zone coverage all right opponents who don't realize that match coverage cancels out when they in four by ones will really suffer okay now there are two at most three adjustments i make the first one consists of putting the outside receiver which is Gallup either on an out route or a smoke screen for this example I'm going to show a smoke screen but it really doesn't matter the second option is putting the running back on a wheel route as you may know this is a famous little combo that a lot of people like to use out of certain sets and I feel this is probably one of the best ways to use this little combo alright what you're going to see is that that deep dig route is going to carry vert hooks and hook curls away from the wheel route. All right. They have to, they have to acknowledge that dig route. If they don't, the dig route gets wide open against cover two. Your first read is the wheel route or the first in route. Like so the wheel route or the in route. Okay. That's cover two. In most cases, that in route would be covered against cover three, but the wheel route and the dig route will carve cover three and cover four apart. All right. But you see against cover two, that dig route carries the vert hook. All right. That's your one, two read against cover two. The mid read and the vert hook on the other side of the field does a good job at covering that dig route. All right. Against cover three. 
it's basically the quick out route or you know if you have the out route out instead of the smoke screen the wheel route or the dig route in this case you see the wheel route gets open right there i'm gonna actually show it with a smoke screen okay same thing in the event that that hook curl addresses the wheel route as I'm going to show you right here Oop, wrong person let's pretend this is the user and he's chasing the wheel route Then you have this wide open right here. It's basically a high low read between the in route and the dig route in the event that your opponent uses that real estate or resources to cover this wheel route like so. All right. This puts this hook curl in conflict. A good way your opponent can probably guard this is using the deep blue. But if you take note to that you can really abuse him if you do that all right that's cover three quarters and palms is the exact same read it cancels out the match properties leaving the wheel route wide open and also as you saw the dig route as you see Cover four opponents who don't realize that it match, uh, it cancels match. They just leave in so much space. Look at this. Look how much space. Basically, one guy have to guard three routes. Palms. Again, it doesn't matter if it's an out route or a smoke screen. Same thing. Easy yards. Another good thing about this, it works. This works pretty damn good in the red zone as well. The closer you get, it can still work. Occasionally, I may bring this guy in. You know, he's my freelancer. I can do whatever with Cooper. You know, I prefer to make him go outside, you know, towards the sideline or, or a fade or whatnot. If it's man press or, you know, cover one, streak him, but... I will get into that later. That is basically levels. It's real simple, simple reads, simple progressions, and a lot of benefits. Gun trips, flanker dig is the next play. And this is one of my base plays I like to come out in. It's really hard to stop and easy reads. I make two to three adjustments at most. 90% of the time, I'm just putting the boundary receiver on the comeback route and running it as is, okay? Some little exotic things I like to do is probably motion over the running back to where the weak flood develops quicker towards the boundary. But again, that's a rare occurrence. It depends on the alignment, uh, the front that the defense have. If they have a, a, a defensive front that's tough for the running back to, to get out, then I will probably motion him over to where he gets there quicker, all right? But again, nine times out of 10, I'm running it like this, all right? Now, against cover two, I have two reads I look for. The stick route by X, which is Lamb, and the running back route. Stick, boom, all right? That's the first read against cover two. Second read is just a running back. Wait for him to come out. The, boom, right there. Okay. Let's do a comeback route. Same thing. You're going to see. He has plenty of space. Cover three. And cover four. As we spoke of the previous play, four by one sets, 
and Madden cancels any match properties. So cover three and cover four will play exactly the same. It's just cover four is worse because it only has one curl route. I'm sorry, curl defender in the middle of the field. All right. Now, my reads are simple. It's still I have the stick route that he actually goes outward towards the numbers. That's my first read. And then I also have the running back route. And if the running back route is covered, the dig route. It's real simple. In the event that my opponent is playing hard flats, the adjustment I make to counter my opponent playing hard flats is I put the streak by the tight end on the out route. Okay, start cover three, the out route gets open like this because that stick route pulls the curl flat. I will use that, I guess, in short down situations or two minute one or two minute uh, offense where I'm trying to get out of bounds. I mean, it's not many yards, but it works. You could also smart route it. What you see right here. Now, if they do a hard flat, this I'm going to show you why it's important that out route is a good adjustment if they do a hard flat. You see, you think it's open, but then the hard flat comes to bite down on it. Putting this out route prevents that from happening. I'd rather have the stick and dig read than the dig and out read for the simple fact that I'm putting more defenders in conflict. You see, and then sometimes the hook curl plays that stick route and my only read will be the dig route. I mean, it's technically a high low read because of the fact that the curl flat or the curl, um, the hook curl has to choose between the stick and the dig, but I'd rather have both routes open by the fault just because you see why restrict myself if I can have two routes open at the same time okay and that's cover three cover four quarters and palms runs the exact same way that's cover three but you see it's even more open because there's only one defender in the middle of the field I'm going to show an instant replay. This is Defender. He go most likely choose these lower guys down here, the running back out route or the stick route. And he ain't going to never see this coming. All right. Now, against cover three, if I motion over the running back, To have an easy read, high low read between him and the comeback route. Okay. Against quarters and palms, if I do this, I just have the comeback route because now it's matching properties. Okay. And this is basically it for this play. I mean, I don't really do much more than that because there isn't much more needed. It's a quick hike play. I come out, just, you know, come back route the boundary, hike the ball, make my progressions. Now, I don't want to spend too much time on PA Reed and Strong Flood, but I want to go over them real quick. It's a popular concept you see around the community, so I don't really want to spam the idea behind this. But you're going to basically get a high-low read towards the sidelines. The good thing I like about this is that the shallow cross by Cooper keeps the user honest. And the play action gives you time to read the read the field. Okay. Start cover two. You're going to see the cornerback carrying the streak, which eventually gets in the way of the corner. But if you wait until the tight end stops, throw it to him. Now, normally he won't go outside. 
he won't go out of bounds, but he will turn up feel like this, hopefully. Wait till he stops and gets sacked. One more again. There we go. Get some easy seven plus yards. Now, if your opponent has 20 yard zone drops, even better. All right. Now, I don't like to spam corner routes, me personally. I like to attack the middle of the field so my opponent uses his resources to defend the middle and end the seams. So when I hit him with a corner route, he's not expecting it. You know what I mean? And also, I don't run corner routes when I need a lot of yards. I like to mix it in when I'm like second and short, third and one, stuff like that to where it's a good chance he won't have a deep zone drop out there. All right. Now that's cover two. Now, if they are playing cover two sync or if they have a soft squad over there, again, with the play action, you will be able to read the trap before you decide to throw it. You see, he buys down, then I have the corner route. Against cover three and cover four, it's the exact same as you saw just now. I'm going to do cover three real fast. Basically a high-low read. You can throw it right after the play action if you want to get it to him if there's no custom zone drops but if you have the patience and the protection you can just wait for the corner route to make his route I like throwing that at a 4 o'clock angle as he passes the numbers that was cover 3 Cover four quarters handles it the best because it kind of makes it look scary. But if you throw it the same, eventually he will get there like it's nothing. You see? But palms is just like cover three. No one is in sight. Well, I mean, except that guy right there. But he is like a 95, 96. I forget what overall... I set him as, but that's basically PA read. Now I like to keep the play action again, like I said, to read the field, but also this formation has pretty good run plays. It has a read option, has a base, has a sweep, which is pretty good. And it has an inside zone. So whatever you fancy it has. All right. Now I want to show single back strong flood. Single back. Trips open strong flood, which is very similar, but I'm attacking a different depth of the sideline. So it's a good way to mix in that corner with this deep dog route because your opponent can't just set it and forget it, a 20 yard or 15 yard zone and expect to cover both routes, okay? Now, what I like about the single back formation is that I can throw this crossing route by Gallup real quick if it's cover three or cover four. Cover two, you can't really do it. You, mean you can, but it's a closer throw. I just pass lead inside at the snap. Like, oop. I mean, if you don't want that, let's try it again. Maybe that was too soon. Yeah. But cover two is not the best, as you see, it's risky. But it comes in handy against cover three, which I'm gonna show you in a little bit. But cover two, the read is simple. You wanna watch the you wanna watch the, the corner. If he if he jams that that fade route that lets you know he's gonna carry him, which allows that flat route to open, as you saw right there. With PA read and strong flood, you always wanna read that safety. I'm sorry, the cornerback if he's in a cover two shell. All right, which means he's five yards from the from the receiver. Okay. And same thing goes if he squats. He's gonna trap the flat route, leaving this route open. The way you want to throw that deep dog route, you want to throw it high ball up the field as he turns. 
Let's try that again. He traps up the field. Now, that vert hook kind of interrupt him, but you're going to see the benefit of the way you throw it against cover three, which I'm going to show you right now. All right. Again, now with cover three, you still have this right here. You want to low ball it. Easy yards. You want to use that in moderation. You don't want to do it too much. Hopefully, you can get your opponent to kind of pay attention to that or put one of the linemen on a vert hook just to kind of take away from the pass rush. Small things like that goes a long way. All right. But cover three again. One thing I want to mention about cover three and cover four, normally the apex defender jams. See how he jams and kind of disrupt the route. If you run in strong flood out of any formation that's the trips against the cover three or cover four, he no longer jams him. He just carries them. And when you see that, you throw it to the flat underneath. And it's very obvious if the, if the apex defender is playing hard flats because you saw how he carried him right there. But if you play a hard flat, he bails straight to the flats instantly like that. And you want to throw a high ball up the field for completion. It has to be a high ball because that corner could still pick it off, especially a Gilmore type person. All right, again, cover three. We go, we go, go hard flats. So you can see the high ball at work. Boom, right there. Now, that was a little overthrow, but it's better than an interception any day. All right. Cover three again. I want to show you the shallow cross real quick. Boom, right there. Easy yards. And you can probably get an animation like that. We can kind of just turn up feel, you know, score. The only defense that can stop this is palms. But I'm going to show quarters. It's basically the same thing as cover three. Have the high, low read between the flat. Now, you want to throw a little sooner if it's quarters because that quarter flat plays a little bit more aggressively, as you saw right there. But what you're going to see is once he carries that dog route, the safety is not in position in quarters to stop it. In palms, however... It just get bagged. You see, it's not really nobody can go to. Okay. All right. 60 go is a unique concept. I'm going to show you how to run it out of single back trips open and gun trips HB week. All right. Now, off top against stock cover two, if you smart route the option route, you get a one play touchdown if your opponent doesn't have a mid read. All right. A good thing about Single back is that it has an 0 1 trap and inside zone that's pretty decent. So hopefully, your opponent won't put a deep blue. But say he doesn't put a deep blue. The other adjustment that I will make is put a comeback route so I can have a high low read towards the field. You're going to see the one play touchdown right here against cover two. Now, the vert hook kind of derailed them towards the outside so he didn't get that much inside leverage. Let's try again. And it's very important that you smart route him 10 or more yards because keeping his stock, you're going to see the mid read matches him like that. Okay. Again, we're going to smart route him. Outside receiver on the comeback route. Right there. Just throw it up the field. Okay. Now, the field side, you're going to see that you want to be more patient with this flat route because the comeback route does not get chucked or jammed to let you know if it's a cloud flat or a soft squat. So you want to be more patient. You saw right there, I'm going to show an instant replay. He doesn't get jammed. He gets carried. I'm going to show a soft squat now. 
you see it's kind of hard to tell but you kind of be you know if you're more patient you can see that coming like that all right now that's cover two on the field side if you notice right here, the curl route, it gets chucked and jammed. But if I put the running back on the out route, it turns the backside of cover two into man. You're going to see the vert hook matches the out route by the running back. And you're going to see the cloud flat or soft squat match the curl, the curl route. And I like throwing it inside low gives your receiver a better opportunity. Now I'm gonna try a 10 yard curl, see if I can get better separation. Which you which you might not have to throw it low. Let's try to throw it regular, because you saw right there you had way more leverage. Okay, let's try a soft squat. The soft squat is the route that really stops this curl. I want to see what happens if I put it at 10 yards. He still stops it. Okay. If you know it's cover two. Now you don't want to throw the soft. You don't, you don't want to throw it if you see the soft squat. The soft squat really, you know, shuts down that curl route. But as you notice... Okay, I threw that too late. But the cloud flat doesn't play it as well. And if you use the regular curl route, throwing it inside, good separation right there. All right? And that's cover two. Cover three, you have the same read towards the sideline, the flat or the comeback route. Obviously, if you see the option route being chucked, that means you can throw it to the flat route. If he doesn't, you got to be a little more patient to read the comeback in the flat. Let's play over top. That fade is the comeback route. So you see now, that's where it gets scary. But if I know it's cover three, Another option you can do, if you notice your opponent is not really playing stock cover three, is put this out route on the boundary and you have a high low read over here. And you notice if your opponent plays over top or if he plays a custom zone drop, that curl gets inside all of them. And this is stock cover three. The curl flat gonna match the running back, leaving this guy wide open. Again, I'm gonna show over top. I'm actually gonna play the sticks this time in cover three. Okay, he plays a, plays a little, but he, okay, he plays a little better with the curl, but he eventually goes to the running back. All right. So let me show you how you can use this. It's cover three. Once you hike it and you see that the apex defender doesn't jam the option route, I'm instantly looking to the left towards the boundary because then I can have an easier read. All right. But now that's in the event that your opponent plays cover three over top. Usually if your opponent is playing a custom zone drop and he he's not jamming the, eight, uh, the slot the slot receiver you can read this comeback route and flat route which i didn't actually uh i didn't actually play over top let's try it again okay the running back is on the out route it's not showing but so you can kind of just wait you can wait it out like that. I showed you that you could throw it to the flat route if he jams the, the option route, but you could also throw it to the comeback route if you time it right. 
So he jams them. Okay. Boom. Right there. Against quarters. As you already know, you're going to have the comeback route and the curl route, especially when you have this out route taking away the, the quarter flat over there. Now, the option route against match coverage, he does a streak. If your opponent plays sticks, and I believe if he plays custom zone drops with quarters and palms, and it's a cover four shell, he will still do a post. But as you see right here when it's match, he does a streak. You see, and you throw that right there. Palms. Before I show palms, let me show an instant replay of quarters to show you, to show you the backside. And you basically have, you know, personnel, the better, the better, the better receiver or corner, you know, prevails right there. It's not the best against quarters, but if you know your opponent is running quarters, you can just put them on a comeback route as well. Okay. But again, this is palms. So in palms, he stops. He does the curl route. And then, and if your opponent does the cover three lock out of dime, he also stops. Okay. Now let me show you why I would come out with that play in HB week. Basically, I have more wiggle room with the running back. The only downside is that I can't make, I can't force a match on the boundary when I put him on the out route, you see? But, I mean, it's still a high-low read, although I threw it late. Okay, so show you again. It's an easy read. Same thing goes if it's a soft squat over there. He bites down, wide open. Okay. And I also have the power to do this right here. I can just do an in route to kind of, you know, get in that little vacated area that the flat and the option route creates right there, as you saw. I mean, that's, that's a lot of space. Especially if you smart route the option route, which beats, oop, wrong, which beats cover two stock. I mean, that's just easy right there. Okay. Now, cover three. Actually, that's the wrong one. That's cover three right there. Not gonna really sh not gonna show the field side because you know it's, it's it's the exact same as the single back, but on the boundary, just gotta read that sooner. Run it again. I mean, it's an easy little quick one-two pitch to the running back. He can't man it up. That's the good thing about it. He can't man it up, so he has to hard flat that area. But the good thing about it, you can mix it up. Instead of going out, you can go in. And against cover three, as I told you, if it's not cover three lock. Say they play underneath. You can throw it to them in that rare instance. All right? And that's basically it with this play. It's real simple, straight to the point. But I hope you get the idea on how how to use it, how influential it is. Now, you can also cancel the matching properties by motioning him over towards the field side and just do the same concept. In this case, you're going to see, because it's a four by one, the, the cloud flat and the soft squat is going to match that curl as if it's, you know, like it did a single back. All right. That's the beauty of having 
multiple play or having the same play in multiple formations because you can do small little tweaks to it like in out route motioning him over stuff like that all right all right we're going to go over the 60 slide concept now i normally like using this play out of gun trips but i'm going to show you why i like coming out with this concept and single back trips open okay I'm a motion into pistol trips open. You go notice the receiver is farther out. And that's a big difference because the closer the receiver is towards the line of scrimmage, the more separation he will get on this corner route. It's an easy pitch and catch. Had I ran that out of pistol trips open, that can be possibly a pick. You want to throw it out of single back trips open if your opponent is running a lot of man blitz. Okay? Off coverage, rather. Now, I'm going to continue on in this formation and show you the setup that's exactly the same in pistol trips open. And all I'm doing is putting the running back on the wheel route and the outside receiver on, towards the field on the comeback route. Okay. This is pretty good against cover two. It's actually best against cover two, but it's pretty decent against cover four and cover three. All right. Cover two, the read goes as follows. The bubble, the wheel route, the comeback route. The bubble, you wait for it. Turn up field, easy 10 plus yards. That's cover two, cloud flat. Use the soft squat. You would think the soft squat will trap the bubble, but he doesn't. Again, easy pitch and catch. The hook, the divert hook takes on the wheel route in the event that your opponent does a double Mabel, which takes away resources. You're going to see the wheel route obviously gets wide open. Nine times out of 10, your opponent will be using that post route by Cooper. All right. Now, that's cover two. Against cover three, it's the exact same reads, but depending on what your opponent does and if he doesn't follow that post route by Cooper, which cover two and cover three, he does more likely than any other choice route between the curl and fade. You can wait till you get leverage and throw it to him. Now, that's stock cover three where he act actually gets matched. If your opponent is doing a custom zone drop, I'm going to show sticks to give you an example. You're going to have the wheel route and possibly that wide open if he doesn't use it. The wheel route right there, and then you wait for it. He's right there. Now, just with the regular setup against cover three, you're going to see you can throw the bubble, but it's not as open as it is against cover two. We can get a few yards. You want to throw it early, though, before he gets too close to the comeback route. That's cover three. Now, say it play over top. That's where you have the wheel route. Boom, like that. And they play over top. You see how that curl flat bailed. That's where you can get more yards with the bubble. See how he bailed and turned his back towards the bubble or away from the bubble? That's the best time to throw the bubble screen. Well, not the screen, the bubble route. That's cover three. Cover four quarters. 
Cooper is going to do a curl route. You're going to have the wheel route open right up like that. And you also have the comeback route. As you know, match coverage and man coverage, the comeback route gets open. That was quarters that show palms. Cooper would do the same curl route. Distract the user right there. Boom. That's when you throw the, the wheel route. Now, palms, you can turn it upfield like so. Okay. And that's basically it when you're under center or if you're in pistol. The other setup, and I like this better against cover two, as you, sh as you will see why, out of gun trips. It's a four by one. So the backside of the cover two have some matching properties and I don't think they match correctly. What happens when you smart route the, the option route that Lamb is running, which is the post curl fade, you're going to notice that if your opponent is not playing a deep middle third by the linebacker, the safety is going to match. As soon as he passes that hash mark right there, you throw it at an 8 o'clock angle. And that's the result. You want to throw it to Lamb at an 8 or 9 o'clock angle as he passes the hash mark in which the ball is placed. Okay? Again. Start cover 2. Boom. Now I want to play sticks to see if that deep half still matches or tries to match that route. See what happens. He does. And same thing goes. So a good cover two beater. If your opponent does a middle blue by the linebacker, you can still throw it to him. It's just not, it's not going to be as open. Now, keep in mind, what he's doing is stopping right here, keeping this guy placed. And because he's not going vertical, he try to match the next deep defender. If they do a deep blue, it's a cover three shell, essentially to the, to the coding of the game. Instead of doing that curl route, Cooper is going to do a fade. However, you still have that option to throw this ball right here. It's more tighter because it gets carried by that curl flat. But what you could do, if you know they're doing a deep blue, is put Cooper on a curl route and smart route him. Okay. And you get the same result. Now he matches a little better, but I mean, that's a good safety. That's as good as it's going to get. All right. Now, that's how you take advantage of cover two with this play. Moving on is with this alignment. What I like to do, I either like to put the running back on an option route like this, which is pretty good, but it depends on the coverage. If it's a, if it's a cover three, I want to say cover three lock. This is not the best option because Cooper would do a, I'm sorry, Lamb would do a curl route. All right. But I like to mix it up. Let me just reset this play. I put them on an out route, in route, you know, usually away from the bubble. Like this, give me a high low read towards the boundary and a comeback route, as you know, gets cover two, easy read. And that's basically the, the main difference between single back pistol and 
gun trips is that I can bomb cover two like this if they don't have a deep blue. Just love it. All right, we're gonna go over the 61X choice. I'm gonna come out and pistol trips open first and then I'm gonna go over gun trips HB weak. All right, now there are two setups I like using. Now one disclaimer, this is best against a cover two user, all right? Now again, I'm gonna show all the other coverages but I prefer not to come out with um, with this play unless they uncover two a lot, okay? But the two setups, if I'm in gun pistol, I'm sorry, if I'm in pistol trips open or single back trip trips open, includes the first one is it has four hot routes, okay? I will fade the boundary receiver, slant the number three towards the field, smart route the number two, that's doing the option route, and I would drag the number one, okay? Again, stock cover two, you have a shot play with the post. If your opponent is in a mid read, you wanna throw it as he crosses the, the safety's face. I threw that in a 10 o'clock angle. If the play was flipped on the other side, it would be a two o'clock angle, all right? I'm gonna run it like that one more again. Make sure you wanna smart route that that option route is very important. Cross the face, right there. If your opponent does a deep blue, it's gonna be a deep dig route. Then you're gonna have an easy high low read between the drag and the dig. Okay, the play art is broken, but trust me, it's a drag, slant, and fade. All right? Let me at least make sure that that's a deep blue. All right? Right there. Of course, you throw it to the drag every time it's open. You don't want to take the risk or get lurked. All right? Now we're going to run that against cover three. Again, not the best concept versus cover three in match coverage, but I'm just going to show it anyway. Now you will have two windows essentially against cover three. If the apex defender jams the option route, you want to wait until the drag passes the option route and throw it. Like that right there. Now, most likely if that Hook defender towards the field is a user. He's not going to leave that as an option open. But then that's where you have the, the dig route. But it's tougher to throw against cover three, especially if it's stock where he's getting jammed. But I'm going to try to simulate the user being this guy here who follows the drag, okay? and I unclicked them. That was my fault. Let's try again. Oh, I didn't un unclick them. All right, fade the outside boundary receiver. Slant the number three, smart route number two, drag number one. See, so he's playing low. The way you want to throw that, you want to throw it you want to throw it at a three o'clock angle to where he doesn't go across the field too much. The farther he goes across the field, the more he can be lurked from the drag. Okay. One more time. Cover three. Now I'm gonna play over top. Let the AI do what he wants. See the drag is covered, I throw it behind him. Now, even though it's not growing behind him, you want to throw it like you're trying to throw it behind him. All right? That's the read right there. Now, cover four, it's not recommended. I mean, 
cover for a drop, of course. But if it's cover for a match, it's not recommended. But I'm going to run it. Smart route. Make sure it's quarters first. And you see, you have to drag open, but a three rec hook will cover it. And yeah, the second setup is good against match coverage. That includes putting the boundary receiver on the comeback instead of a fade and the number one from the field side on the in route, basically creating a levels concept. All right. Now with this one, you can do whatever you want with the running back. You can swing them to the boundary to kind of get a high low read. And it's not let me show you the play yard. There we go. You can do something like this. It's your first read right there. If it's cover two, that's a good first read. Again, the running back is optional, but why not? Second read is the backside in route. In this case, the the dig post option route does not get open on top of cover two. But if they play with a deep blue, you have a high low read still. Okay. For example, put the linebacker in the middle third. You see now, if it's not custom zone drops, what you're going to see there is the vert hook matching. He matched the vertical route. I mean, I know I had this open, but I wanted to see if I can still throw it to him if I wait a little bit longer. But you saw the safety had no assignment deep, so he came underneath, okay? Now you could fade that receiver, but ain't no point. The ball should have been out. Against cover three, have the comeback route, swing, and then the end route by number one from the field side. They have a quick little read right here. Keep your opponent honest underneath. Against cover three, you're not gonna be able to throw that first end route. It's basically to kind of distract any user or hook curl from the boundary side. But what's gonna open up is the backside in route right there. All right, now cover three, we're gonna play over top. And you see, it's a tougher throw against cover three, at least at least that setup because the way he gets open, now you could smart route him to help a little bit, but in the event you see your opponent is not playing stock cover three where the apex defender jams this guy here, you wanna throw it as soon as he hit the numbers, right there. Okay. And I'm not gonna show match coverage because the only option you have is the comeback route. So I'm gonna move on until I'm gonna move on into Gun Trips HB Week. 61X choice. Now if I come out with this formation, there are two things I'm gonna do, or that I can do. A is Put the number one towards the field in the comeback route. Or B, put them on an out route. I like the out route. Better yet, I'm sorry. The zig route as opposed to the out route. Because it's going to take every flat defender with him. The reason why that's important is I want the running back to trail behind him underneath the levels concept. Okay. The backside boundary receiver, you can do whatever you want. Put them on a comeback, which works, but it's not showing the play art. And I'm going I'm to run it against cover two real quick. 
You see right there, you got a nice little crease with easy yards. The option route takes away the vert hook. The end route takes away the vert hook from the boundary. And the zig route takes away the flat. Real easy. Okay. And this read is very consistent against cover three as well. Again, do whatever you want with the boundary receiver. You can smart route him. You can put him on a comeback, whatever works for you. But you see, it's the same thing. Cover three hard flats. This is where the zig route comes in handy. Wow, he actually played, which is weird. Maybe because his zone is so high, he plays like a maniac. Let's try that again. I mean, if you notice that, you can just wait out the zig route, but that was kind of weird. See, now he plays the zig route. I threw it late because I was anticipating him to bite again. But you kind of get the drift. Most defenders are not going to play like that. I believe Gilmore having that flat Ability makes him act like that. All right. Now you also do this right here. Since the running back is on that side, you can kind of just have a better levels concept as opposed to putting a swing route. You have an out route, which also beats man. And then if it's man coverage, what I like to do as well is put the running back on the in route. And he would never get guarded because there are three routes crossing him. So the user gonna have to choose if you wanna follow the running back through all those routes or help out on one of those routes. We're gonna go over two, four vertical plays that I like running out of this playbook. The first one being pistol trips open and the second one being single back trips open, all right? If I'm looking to attack the seams, I'm coming out with the pistol trips open. If I'm looking to attack the sideline, I'm coming out a single back trips open, all right? Depending on what my opponent likes to do on defense determines what, where I'm going to attack. Now, this how the single back trips open one looks. The one adjustment I make is put the outside number one receiver towards the field on the comeback route. That's beneficial for match coverage, man coverage, and stock cover three, all right? Against cover two, I'm going to have a high-low read between the running back and the crossing route. If the fade receiver towards the boundary gets carried by the cloud flat, it makes this pass much difficult to throw, all right? If you see that, you want to check down to the running back. He go do an out route every time, all right? If it's a... Uh, a soft squat, cover two. You can wait for it and read it. And you can throw the crossing route. All right. That's cover two. Real simple. The running back is never wrong. So if nothing else is open, look for the running back. He's going to be somewhere open. All right. Cover three. If the apex defender jams Lamb, which is the number two on the field side, you want to throw the comeback route. Throw it outside, preferably away from that defender. Against cover three, you also have the crossing route as an option. Which I got block shedded. But you saw that he was open. In the event that neither one is open, the crossing route or the comeback route, you have the check down right here. But as you see right there, the crossing route was wide open. All right. If it's cover three and the apex defender is not jamming the number two receiver, 
since you're in single back, you can throw it instantly. So that's your first that's your first look. Which I forgot to play over top. Thought I did. Okay. Come back route. Throw it instantly. All right. That's the beauty of single back. Or should I say under center? Uh, quarters. Have the comeback route. And if you have the good matchup personnel, you have that crossing route right there. And the running back was never wrong. Okay. Palms, the exact same thing. But the crossing route gets open way easier. And that's basically that's basically what I look for when I'm coming out of single back four verts. All right. If I come out in pistol four verts, the pistol trips open. Don't confuse the pistol trips open with the with the pistol left open trips left open all right make sure it's the pistol trips open four verts i'm looking to bomb cover two and cover three okay the only adjustment i make is the boundary receiver i put him on a comeback route all right and i'm gonna show you why in a minute now against cover two i have two ways to essentially attack cover two the first one is through the seam. As soon as he pass the safety, I throw it inside, just like that. The second way, if your opponent has a deep blue out on the field, like so, I'm looking for that fade route by, the, by the number one. Throw it up the field. If you can squeeze it in there, possession catch. You can also do it this way. You can motion the number two receiver towards the number one receiver, which brings in the, the number one receiver closer, giving him more space and on the sideline. Just wait for him. Let's try that one more time. Probably want to throw it more towards the sideline if you do it this way. All right. Yeah, towards the sideline. Easy catch. Try it again. Cover three. Like that. I threw that at a 10 o'clock angle as he was approaching the second hash mark. Run it one more again. Cover three. Like that. Easy bomb. In the event that that's not available, take your check down, man. Don't be afraid to, check, to take your check down. All right. And that's cover two and cover three. What about cover four match? I got you. You have to come back route. But that motion that I showed you previously, use that same motion, motion lamb towards the field side where the number one is at. That brings down the number one. Against any match coverage, what you're going to see is it's going to be a miscommunication leaving Lamb by himself. And that was quarters. I'm going to show palms. Again, it's comeback route just for safety. I 
Real easy. All right, before we hang it up, I want to go over three more plays and I want to kind of skim through them kind of quick because they're not really complicated plays. They just good complimentary plays. All right. Now, the first one is stick out of gun trips HP week. And I want to come out in this play if my opponent likes to play cover two a lot, because what I want to do or what I'm trying to accomplish here is find out exactly what type of middle zone he's using for his linebacker. If he's, if he's using the middle read, if he's using the deep blue or whatnot, this would tell me right here. Okay. Now, if I was to make any adjustments, the two adjustments that I would make is smart routing the out route and changing the slant into a comeback route. Okay. It gives me a high low read on the boundary as well as an option to beat man coverage with the running back and the comeback route. All right. Now, against stock cover two, the primary receiver, which is Cooper in this case, he's going to stop, as you already know, or may not know. That's what he does. In the event that your opponent plays a middle third with the linebacker, this lets you know by doing the out and stick right there. If he goes out and stick right there, that tells you that, okay, oh, my opponent is in cover two, but he's using a deep blue. That means I can't try to bomb the middle of the field between the halves. That means I have to attack underneath the middle third. You, you get my drift. This is how you discover what your opponent is doing with his mid read or, you know, his linebacker. Okay. Now against cover two, If your opponent's playing cloud flats in his stalk, you're going to see the fade gets jammed, but you will be able to throw this out route because that fade carries the cloud. If they're in the soft squat, it does the exact same thing because the out route is going vertical. Okay. Now, in the event that he's playing hard flats, you don't even want to mess with the out route. Even though you would think it'd be, it's deeper than the hard flats, it's not. Okay, I wouldn't even test it. What you could do is possibly read it and throw it to the fade, but depending on how good that safety is, that can happen, all right? But that's what you have the boundary high-low read for, okay? You can wait it out like that. And it's best to wait it out. I'd rather, I'd rather get that right there than, than try to guess what my opponent is doing over there. Now, if you want to be certain, what you could do is just put him on a, a curl route. If he gets jammed, that lets you know you can throw this. But you see the vert hook is playing that 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 flare up pretty well. So you can't just throw it real quick. Okay. But this curl route lets you know if they're doing a soft squat or hard flat because in either event, he doesn't jam the cornerback. I mean, the receiver. Okay. Like this. You see? But you gotta wait a little longer to throw it. But yeah, I mean, I come out, you can run it against cover three, it's cool, but in the event they play underneath, it kind of shuts down the play, you know, unless you have the, unless you keep the slant on, on the field, then you can just smart route the, the out route that's not shown that it's being smart routed. And that kind of gives you like a, a, a high low read between the stick and the slant. But again, I only come out when I'm trying to find out what kind of cover two my opponent is running. Curls, it's just, you know, it's just to kind of keep my opponent guessing like, 
letting him know that I'm going to take my check downs like a beast. The main adjustment I make is put the number two receiver on a hitch route. And if I can, you know, if I feel like doing it, I could put the outside receiver on a comeback route. I'm assuming he's on a comeback route, even though it's not showing. But basically, I read the running back and that hitch. Okay. Against cover three, the running back is usually covered. However, the hitch by the number two receiver is usually open. Like so. All right. Cover four is the exact same as cover three. Because it's not. It's, there's no matching principles because it's a four by one. The post is kind of there to kind of keep the, the user honest and can possibly get open against man coverage. All right. And then you can also put comeback routes all over the place. You know, say the hitch is the hitch in the in the running back check and release is for zone coverage. And then the other three routes are for man coverage. All right. Last place, actually one of the better plays that I, I didn't really go over because the levels play is pretty good on its own. But this is a good mix up because you attack a different part of the field with a similar concept. All right. And a good thing about this post route by drawing the tight end is that it gets inside leverage against man coverage, which means anybody can run that route and get open. All right. Now, if it's man coverage, you want to put man beating routes on the field like so. Just, you know, two comeback routes is good enough. Perhaps an option route by the running back. And that's a pretty good man beating concept. But back to the stalk play. I'm going to show you how you can use it against zone. Real similar to levels, but the only difference I'm doing here is I'm doing my motion where I want the number one receiver, which is Gallup, towards the field. I want to bring him in closer. So what I want to do is I want to motion Jarwin towards him, and that's going to bring him closer. All right? That prevents Jarwin from getting jammed against cover three and cover four match or whatnot. All right? Now, he doesn't get jam against cover four match because his match properties gets canceled out, but cover three, he does. The second adjustment is I put him on an out route, a uh, gallop, that is, and it's not going to show it. It's still broken. Jeez Louise. And then run it back on a wheel route. Let me, let me reset the play. Jeez. All right. Out by number one. Wheel route by the running back. Motion drawing towards the out route. And what you're going to see is against cover two, cover three, and cover four, drawing will get open as soon as he passes the hash marks in which the ball is on. All right. But that's your second or third read, depending on where the user is at. The second read is usually the drag. But the first read, as you already probably guessed, is the wheel route by the running back. All right. Again, let's show this. We're going to go to drawing this time. What you're going to see right there. Depending on if he gets muggied up, right? You know, he got he got all bumped and gumped and stuff. So it kind of slowed down his progress. But depending on how fast he get there, how deep he is, when you, when he get there, determines how you go throw it. See, he's getting he's getting jammed by Gilmore. Perhaps it's because he's he's lit up. His X factor his X factor is lit up. Normally normally that doesn't happen. All right. But against cover three, it's the exact same thing. Believe me, he's on the out route, even though it's not showing it. What you're gonna see, you wait for it. Right there. And that's what stock cover three where the hook zones are are more likely going to match. Okay. Let's play cover three over top where there's no matching principles. Wheel route, as you see. And then 
Jarwin. Ever since the inception of Madden 22 and Madden 21 being a man meta, my first thing that I wanted to do when Madden 22 came out was find a way to beat man consistently. That means cover one hole, cover one robber, press, cover two man press, you name it. I don't have the fastest receivers on the Cowboys. So I can't use speed to, you know, make my receivers do crossing routes and all that kind of stuff and get separation with the user, you know, going going bananas. What I did was find ways to take advantage of the animations the game gives you when you're when your receiver is pressed, for instance, all right? The whole goal behind this strategy is to get your opponent to stop pressing to where you can do slants, whip routes, and all that good stuff with slow receivers that can get good separation, all right? Now, I'm going to start off by showing you guys what I like to call a pseudo slant, all right? Now... The better the receivers run it is, the better the outcome. But the gist of it is finding routes that no matter what the, the corner does, no matter how they shade, they will always get an inside release. All right. Now, by default, you have certain routes like the deep dig right here in the S post that gives you an automatic inside release. But there are certain plays, not in this playbook per se, but throughout the game, that it can be looking like a regular dig and the receiver will automatically get inside leverage. It can look like a regular post and the receiver can get automatic leverage. It's just, you gotta find them. With the run and shoot, you have a lot of switch concepts that you can utilize the inside release, all right? Now, the best one you can do this tactic with is the post me i use i usually like to have the post towards the outside because i feel that the in breaking route the dig route works better towards the boundary but you can you know whatever works for you you can flip it if you like if you have the right personnel you can do it this way but one thing i would say you have two chances to throw the dig route so if you're looking to throw the dig route at this at its final cut it's a good idea to have the dig route towards the field, all right? Especially if you go have the running back going in the same direction where the user has to honor the running back as well. But let me show you what I mean. So, one thing I like about this play and a lot of switch concepts is that a lot of the audibles are done for you already. Meaning, you want the inside receivers or whatever receiver that's close to the in breaking route you want them to clear out either by doing a wheel route like this or doing a flat drag or whatnot. Now, in the case of the post, this particular wheel route forces his man to jam or bump it to the post. In this case, I put the outside receiver on a flat just to make sure he don't bump into the receiver. All right. And the only adjustment I make outside of that is put the running back on the end route, which, you know, torches man coverage. Now, I'm going to show you the in-breaking routes and how I like to throw them. That's one. Now, I'm going to show the post. And then I'm going to explain it. Now, that's the worst case scenario. The post is actually the best route. You can actually wait the longest before throwing it because he cuts across the field as opposed straight, straight, you know, directly across the field like the dig route. The good thing about that is if you try to throw the pseudo slant to the dig route and you wait too long. Now that it didn't happen there, but a lot of times the corner can rebound and make a play. All right. But you see what I'm doing now. It's not showing what I'm doing for us. What kind of throw because for some reason it's bugged out. But what I'm doing is I'm throwing a low ball inside, okay? Depending on the route, you may want to throw it inside downward or inside directly. In the case of the dig route, I want to throw it inside downward. 
like that. And what I'm doing is I'm aggressive. I'm, I'm taking control of the receiver and I'm aggressive catching it. All right. Running again. Ooh, it got batted down. Okay. Like that. See how I'm taking control of the receiver? Now, I have a nasty clip of me doing this for the first time. The first day that Madden 22 came out, I was playing KO. I'm going to show that at the end of this guide. But um, the post, see? Okay, I didn't, I didn't auto, I didn't audible the the wheel route towards the field so he you saw how he jammed and ran into the cornerback let me just do this right here see easy now you want to do this in moderation I'm going to show you other ways to beat man coverage but you want to do this in moderation because there's two things that can happen if you do that too much one which is not really a big issue because you see you got the end breaking routes on both sides of the field but you may have a user try to bait that, right? Which is fine. You have two in and breaking routes. But the other is they can do the flats like this. Now, you don't necessarily have to worry about the flat from the safety unless they plan like five yards. But you have to worry about the slant. I'm sorry, not the slant, the curl flat. But you do have to worry about the curl flat by the linebackers because they are right in the, in the window. All right. I'm not going to even throw it. There's no point. You want to be mindful. And then what I'm going to do is show you the counter to that. All right. Now, that's the that's the pseudo slants. Again, I'm going to show you that's different switch concepts in the run and shoot you can use for this. They have the run and shoot switch curl post, which is pretty good. I actually like this one because. This spot route right here. It's a little tougher to throw on the field side. I like throwing it towards the boundary. But you see, I have the post over there. And what I can do is I can, you know, put the running back on the option route or in route. It doesn't matter. All right. But just in, in this example, let me just block them. All right. Show the post. Now, that, that wheel route, as you saw, it doesn't bring the defender into the, the post like the previous play. That's why I say... It depends on the wheel route towards the field. This one right here doesn't bring the defender. Now, of course, he's not pressing, though. Let me see. Maybe because he wasn't pressing. Let's try this again. So, yeah. Easy pickings. Now. Same thing with this one. Now, I want to try to throw this up the field because certain spot routes in the game, I'm not sure about this one, but certain spot routes, you can just throw it up the field low ball and it gets better separation. Let me see what this one do for me. Okay, eh, it doesn't really matter. But you kind of get the drift. You're getting inside leverage. Now, keep in mind, like I said, the better the receiver, the better the outcome. All right? Now, before we move on to the next way to beat man coverage, which is my favorite. I'm gonna also show you that you can do the same thing with comeback routes, all right? Now, this one is really specific on how good the receiver is. If the receiver is trash or he's not that good compared to the corner, you won't necessarily get the animation that you want to throw the ball. Now, I'm gonna show what I mean. Okay, see, see a, bad, a bad corner will stonewall the receiver like that. Now, I still threw it because you can still kind of get it there. Because basically, here's what's happening. The computer AI that's, that's doing a jam animation, he's stuck in the animation. You throw it as soon as you can. I wouldn't say as soon as, soon as you can, but you want to throw it within five yards. And that, that pass is fast enough to where your user opponent can't click on in time to make a play, okay? But you see, even though he's stonewalled, he's still in animation, so I can still kind of throw that. Let me see what Gallup is doing. Does he, does he do what I want him to do? Let me see. Okay, he got stonewalled too. Go try it again. Actually, let's 
change the play to where when you want, when you do a comeback route, you want the receivers in the, on the inside to do an in-breaking route or a vertical. That animation right there is the one I want. That one right there. The better the receiver, the more times you're going to get this animation right here. You're going to force this inside release. Boom. By far, the comeback route is the best way to throw this ball. But the, the, but the reason why I don't do it as much is because I don't have elite receivers to do it. Now, if I have Cooper towards the field or, you know, if he's, if he's outside, then I would, you know, I would do a comeback route with Cooper. Or if he's against a, or if he's against a bad corner, you know, if the receiver is against a bad corner or whatnot. And the good thing about this is that it's not speed oriented. It's all about leverage and animation. Boom, just like that. Now I will say it's tougher to get that animation when they when I'm in cover two man because they more they farther inside. And one thing you got to note out of all the labbing I've done, cover two man and cover one robber are coded completely different. You can shade outside, you can shade over the top, you can shade downward. You would think that it doesn't matter if you have cover one robber or cover two man that the shading makes it the same. It's not. And I'm going to show you one play that proves that. Okay? Now let's move on to the actual example that I like to do best. But keep in note of that. Of the, if you don't have inside breaking routes, like I've shown you in your playbook of choice, or, you know, if you use a run and shoot, of course, you saw the comeback routes work. So any play that has a, 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 a installed comeback route like PAE right there, for instance, you can use. All right. But let me show you something that proves my point about cover two man and cover one robber. Four verticals out of pistol. All right. Now. Cover two man. I'm going to run it stalk. Take a look at the fade route that Gallup is doing. You know, it's been a while since I've done that because I don't depend on that. And I'm going to show you why right now. Robber. He don't jam him at all. Or he doesn't try to jam him at all. So there you see that robber by the fault doesn't jam him. That's why I don't I don't depend on that. Okay. Now, say if they have they cover two men and they shade outside. Now I used to think that cover two men shading outside was like cover one robber because cover one robber by default they are they are also outside. But you see here, it still gets behind the corner. All right. If you shade Outside, shade underneath, shade over the top. Now, shading over the top, it gives you the same result. But as you see, no one's getting jammed. With cover one robber, that receiver doesn't get jammed and, every, and everybody else does. You see? Now, what if I shade cover one robber inside? Okay. Still doesn't get beat. You see, that proves my point. Cover one robber is coded differently from cover two man. All right. Now, as you see with cover two man, I showed you that I can throw that fade route, right? But also with this outside release fade by the boundary receiver. We are, again, taking advantage of the animation that the, the cornerbacks give my receiver. This is, prob this is prob probably the best fade route to bomb man coverage. 
I'm gonna show you different ways. But in this case, what I wanna do is, as soon as this corner and receiver in their press animation, I wanna throw it towards the sideline up the field. In this example, since the boundary is to the left, I wanna throw it at a 10 o'clock angle. If the boundary was to the right, I'll be throwing it at a two o'clock angle. And in my case, because my receivers aren't fast, you may have to test it out with faster receivers. You may have to test it out separately with Gunslinger. I don't have either. But the way I throw this is a high ball at 10 o'clock after animation. Easy. All right, now the worst case scenario is an incomplete ball overthrown or a catching traffic, all right? The better the receiver, the more separation he will get to where it's more of a consistent pass, all right? And if your receiver has deep out elite, he's really going to drop the ball. But I'm going to run it a few more times. That's one. Overthrown, that's fine. I'm okay with an overthrown and incomplete because I know that no one else is going to be able to get to it but my receiver. All right. Now, what if your opponent shades outside? You have a pseudo slant. Again. You see? Take what your opponent gives you. Real simple. Now, of course, you want to read the you want to read the room, okay? If anybody, you know, if a linebacker going to the flat or anything like that, you don't want to just throw it. Read the room first. But you kind of get my drift. That's how you attack that sideline. Now, one thing that's really important that I didn't talk about yet is the position of the ball. All right? Preferably, you want the ball to be on the hash mark. Obviously, the trips is always towards the field. Okay. But you want the ball on the hash mark. It, for some reason, it gets farther towards the sideline away from the safety. All right. All right. Now. I'm going to show you how to attack the field. As I mentioned earlier, this route right here, you know, it beats his man. But I don't want to be dependent on that because it don't work against cover one robber. All right. Most cases, you could use a streak. I like the streak because any receiver can get separation from the corner if they press, even weaker receivers. Cedric Wilson, speed is 88. Uh, overall, 71. And the guy that's over there, Mills, let's see what Mills looking like. That's Wilson. Let's see what Mills looking like. 95 speed. Now, granted, it's a slot corner. Let me go to regular corner so you can see the stats. It's overall. 95, 95 speed, awareness, all that good stuff is all high. Man covers 95, 96, 92. I mean, you see it. Now, that's important, especially against cover one robber. If you're trying to lob it up, all right? But in case of throwing it between the corner and the deep half, it's not necessarily important, really. It's all about the timing, like I mentioned, towards the field or towards the boundary, all right? It's just the, the streak gives you better animations for weaker receivers. You can do a fade. Now, the, the benefit of the fade is that a lot of times you find players that have it by default. You don't have to do an audible. You can just quick snap it. But 
the streak ideally is the best to run this with any receiver. What you're going to see is the same. Wait till the animation ends. Throw it outside. Now, that was overthrown, obviously. But the idea is to attack the deep halves to where only your receiver can get to it. You do it a few times, your receiver or your opponent, it, it will be in his mental note to where he has to be careful over there. I have footage of this just to kind of let you know. So you can see it in real time. Now, I took too long to throw that. Let me see when I threw it. I know I, know I took too long. It felt like I did. I should have threw it here. Look where I'm at now. I waited damn near seven yards before I threw it. That's why it's important to time it right within 10 yards or after the animation. And of course, that was overthrown. But you kind of get the, kind of get the drift. All right. Same thing goes though. If they shade outside, I threw that. I didn't throw it low. But you still gonna have to pseudo slant. Let's try it again. Now, if I if, if I ever do the pseudo slant, you I mean, if you're scared to have that streak right there, you can you know make them do something else, make them do a whip route, something kind of get out the way because obviously you want to make adjustments for man coverage. Period. You don't want to just keep that route on the field, right? But again, real simple. You saw how he dropped it. That's like the worst case scenario, but you kind of get the drift. Now, if you do a fade route, it's, again, it's not it's not the best for weaker receivers. I like the fade route because you can throw a little bit more outside, obviously. But weaker receivers will get their butt beat by better corners. All right. You see, that animation, even though he got a step, that kind of that's kind of a win for the corner because that gives the even though he's going more outside, it, it, it makes the throw harder and it's more risky. All right. You see? And you can't really rat catch it. You have to possession catch it because it's so far on the sideline. It forces a catch and traffic penalty. You see what I mean? Now, that's cover two man. Cover one robber press I'm going to show the boundary first and then I'm going to show the, the field usually if it's cover one robber I always go to the field because a lot of times the safety is over there towards the boundary but I'm going to run it anyway you see the problem is with cover one robber is that it forces that route inside unless they shade outside I mean, unless they shade inside with cover one robber, then he forces outside. But you saw him being forced inside, even though he could win that, he could win that one on one. Possibly, he's right here to help towards the sideline. Shade inside, but if you throw it too early. Uh, okay, the um, the safety didn't get over there, so it's fine. But who's that guy right there? Jackson. Let's see Jackson's stats. Gallup, 91 speed, 6'1". One thing I didn't, uh, I never really laughed because I never had to. You see all my receivers are 6'1 and above. I'm pretty sure a height makes a difference too. Okay, so don't try this with a short receiver unless they're super fast. All right. But Jackson's speed and overall. No, 
94, 95 speed, awareness, you see all the goods. You kind of get the point, right? Now, as long as your receiver can get in front of the corner, he can stack them. It doesn't matter how fast the receiver is to a certain extent. If he's not too far, like you saw, he, uh, Jackson's speed is like 95 or something like that, whatever it is. It's at least four notches above gallops, all right? Now, the only time I would go to this against cover one Robert is if you see them shade inside, of course, okay? But back to them shading inside with Robert. You see? Now, towards the field, Again, you want to use a streak, and it's not showing a streak. Let me reset it. Robber. And basically, uh, towards the field, it doesn't really matter if they, if they, you know, if they get an inside release or outside release. What matters is, does he get a step? Now, of course, again, like I mentioned, if you have a fast receiver, you could just lob it. But I'm showing you how you can throw the ball to where even a slow receiver can still get the ball. All right. What I'm doing is doing I'm, I'm throwing it as a touch pass. OK, high ball, touch pass up the field. For some reason, it's not showing the kind of ball I'm throwing. It's kind of a bugged out or whatnot. But I just want to let you know that's how I'm throwing it. High ball up the field. OK. Of course, this can work against a fast receiver as well. It's just you may not have to do that extra step. All right. But again, you get inside release, but he has a step. 88 speed, y'all. 88 speed. Now, I'm going to try, even though I know it's not going to be as good because of the stats, how different the stats are from each other, like the corner and the receiver. I want to try a fade against Robert. Okay. You see how it looked like he got beat, but he really didn't get beat. He's so fast, he's the guy who picks it off. I wanted you to see that animation because a lot of times, if you try to go against Robert and you have a stock play like Stick Bubble, for instance, where it's an automatic fade and you're trying to quick hike it, trying to quick hike it because you know it's robber or whatnot. If the receiver isn't that good, or even if he is that good and the corner gets beat, you would think you have the guy. But he's so fast. It's his ball. You get what I'm saying? The streak is overall the best way to throw the bomb against cover one robber. All right? Wait till the animation ends. Worst case scenario, most cases, it will be an incomplete ball like that. Before I go, I want to show a play or two that I come out in against man coverage. And also, I want to show how you can do the same thing if your opponent is leaving the middle of the field open against man coverage. Say he's playing the old school curl flats for both safeties or he's using the safety and he's too far inside. I'm going to show you all that. Let's go back to cover. Let's go back to cover. It doesn't really matter. Let's go to cover one robber. The play I like to come out if my opponent plays a lot of man coverage is in spread. For one, it's 60 streak. I'm going to actually put that as an audible. And circle, where are you? There you go. All right. 
And of course, I have a Z under the double move right there. But we're going to go over circle. Now, it doesn't matter if your receiver is doing this, you know, the slot receiver is doing this fade. This is the better fade if it's cover one or, you know, if he's leaving the middle open. This is the better option. But you can do a regular streak. You can have that four verticals uh, inside seam fade or whatnot, whatever you want to call it. It's just, it doesn't really matter. But I like coming out with this play because I have multiple options to beat man on top of putting Wilson on a streak or, you know, I can do this right here. This is probably one of my favorite setups because against cover, against, against cover two man, I, I have that outside pass that I showed you earlier with the streak. Against cover one robber, I have the streak over the top. And then if they play over top where the corner's not pressing, I have the zig route. And sometimes this rail route by Cooper gets open right here. I have all man beating concepts on the field. Okay. The running back route beats man. The crossing route beats man. And I, I'm pretty sure I had to throw to Wilson. Yeah, I did. He had a step. But you see, I have options now. Okay, I was using that guy, so you get my drift. Now, 60 streak. I'd rather run the option. Well, it's not showing. I'd rather run the option route towards the field. Now, if it's a if it's a decent receiver like Cooper, or I mean, he's above decent, you can smart route it if you like, but there's no need. All right. You have the man beating route. Both these routes get inside leverage. Lamb route automatically gets inside leverage the user has to user this route from lamb and you can make it even more difficult by putting the running back on the out or mesh him up with this with this right here you have if he if he is playing one of these safeties and he's not giving the slot receiver right here any help you have a shot with that seam route what you're going to see is he gets open underneath. He gets inside leverage. And there are certain examples where I'm going to show you with Gallup. He goes outside, then he comes inside. Okay. Not like that. Usually he kind of like fights his way inside. I mean, let me run it until I get the animation. There it is right there. You see? He's going to always win inside. If, it's, if the receiver isn't that good, I never smart route that route. There's no need to. All right? Another good thing about it, you could always, well, not in this formation, but I'm going to come out and spread, pistol spread. Stick the option. You can also motion him across the field. All right. Now that's that's Gilmore. He's going to match. As you see, like he doesn't really get the leverage because Gilmore is way better than him. Let me try to smart route him. See what happens. Look at that. Nice corner. All right. If I was to smart route him from here, he could still get separation. Just showing you different ways you can beat man, right? Now, I'm not really paying attention of this route here because I know for a fact it automatically wins. You know, boom, inside leverage, bam, he's open. Okay. It has to be 
It has to be babysitted. All right, or double teamed. But what I want to show you is, I want to show you Lamb's route down the seam. I mean, real easy, real easy. Okay, again, I throw it the same way where I do a high ball after the animation. And since he has so much separation, I didn't have to, but it's just safe practice if you have a slow receiver is to high ball it. All right, so I think it's time to hang it up. Hopefully you guys and girls, whoever play Madden, learn something new. I'm pretty sure that the man coverage part is probably the most appealing to most people because it took time to learn and I don't think everybody had the time that I had, you know. And if you have any feedback, likes or dislikes, let me know, man. I have tough skin. I ain't no ain't no little girl, no five year old and all, all that kind of stuff. I can take the criticism. But if you learned something new and it worked out, let me know that too. All right. If you watch the video from start to finish, please let me know because you're the real MVP. I'm new to this whole YouTube stuff, so any time that you have is really appreciated, all right? Remember to read the time codes if you want to go back to previous plays or plays that you found that you kind of want to invest more time in. Like, subscribe. I don't really talk about that much, and I won't. Hopefully, you know, that's a good habit of you if that's the kind of person you are. And uh, follow my social medias that I have on the time uh, in the description. And uh, yeah, I don't have any much more to say, man. I'm just kind of excited that I was able to finish this again because I had to do it prior update. But anyway, man, I'm done talking. Y'all enjoy yourselves and uh, hope to hear from y'all later.